How did you? How did you move? Oh, your trial at United come about? Who was you playing oh, for? Sorry, and... you, you asked me. You asked me that question, and for some reason, I didn't answer it. Um, it's all right. I, I'd... I'll keep asking. <laughs> I think Oops, I yeah. interrupted. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, who, was you, who was you playing for? In so this is in Joburg, isn't it? Johannesburg. Yeah, I was at I yeah. was at Wits University. Um, I'd had two seasons there, and in my second season, I got represented or chosen to represent South Africa. Um, I didn't play, which is why I was allowed to play for England later on. Um, but uh, there was uh, my, my, my manager was in fact a guy called Eddie Lewis, who was a Busby babe in '58, and um, he just turned to me one day and said, "Hey, if you if you can represent South Africa at 18 years of age, you, you must have a chance." So I went over to to Holland initially um, because I thought England would be would be a bit too tough, and um, and I speak Dutch coming from South Africa. Um, and I got a couple of offers to stay. And then I went to Hamburg in Germany. And again, they were like, yeah, we can put you on a, on a youth contract. And I went, I'm not, I'm not you know, traveling no. 6,000 miles for that. And I, this is the truth. And a lot of people have, have said to me, this is a BS story, but it's not. It's the truth. I was sitting with this, this, um, this agent who was taking me around. And I had a football magazine I, as a shoot back in those days. Mm-hmm. And I had a picture of Alex Stepney. And it said, Alex is 35. We're looking for someone to take over. And I phoned my dad and I said, one last shot before I come back home. Do you know Dave Sexton? He goes, yeah, yeah, played against him. I'll make a call. So he phones me back, my dad, and says, meet Dave Sexton in London. Um, they're going to play against West Ham. He'll take you back to Manchester and give you a trial. And so I met at the hotel, and Martin Bucken came out, and I'm stood in this fancy hotel in London. I said, Mr. Bucken, name's Gary Bailey. Dave Sexton said, come here. He's going to take me to the game. And he turns to me, and he said, yeah, you and every other fan, and walked straight past me, and I went, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> because I had, no, I had no idea that there was such a fan base and the fans would come up. But, yeah. So I stood there like an idiot until Dave Sexton came, and then, he said, oh, you're Roy's son. Come on, put me on the bus. And I, I sat with the lads and, and, and one of them, I'm sitting on the bus and I'm so excited and I'm 19 years of age. And someone said, is the post office tower somewhere here? And it was right there, you know, the typical wind up. And yeah. I dived straight you in. You went for oh, it, yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I watched the lads. I think we won 3-1 at, at West Ham, Upton Park and came back and had a trial. Um, and Alex came to watch me play, Alex Stepney. And him and Dave Sexton decided that I was worth keeping. Um, so they offered me a contract. My dad said, put that one day a week at university in, which I did. And my very first day at the cliff, I walk in and they give me a space in the third, third team dressing room. And the guy next to me turns to me. Oh, no, on the way in, some guy passes me. He goes, are you Gary? I went, yeah. He says, thank you very much. I went, what are you thanking me for? He said, I've been here five years as a goalkeeper. And you come along and I'm the guy they throw out. And I went, wow, that was a bit harsh. So I go and sit down and the guy says, my best mate's just been kicked out because of you. He said, if you're not a good goalkeeper, I personally will sort you out. Who, thought, who what are these? a lovely welcome. These who are are these? The they were like youth team players, under, you know, U17, wow. under 17s. I know, that was my welcome to United. So I knew straight away that I was going to have a tough time. Yeah. So basically, you left South Africa to go to Holland just to see if you could get a trial and you ended up at Manchester United about what three days later oh no you went to hamburg oh, sorry yeah and then you ended up at manchester united so you left yeah. south africa with no aspirations to actually get to manchester united i didn't think it was possible and, and as i say it was a it was a last chance i spent about a week in holland four or five days hamburg went to united and it's one of those where i thought you know what if you've if you've tried and you haven't succeeded go back play for south africa finish a degree move on um, and I played at Everton in the reserves and that's when, and the following morning, Dave Sexton called me in the office and I thought he was going to give me the normal, thanks for coming. We should yeah. add well, not bad, stay in touch, all that. And he just said to me, we're very impressed. Do you want to, you want to join us? Here's a four year contract. And I was like, wow. And then you think you've made it because you're like, wow, I'm at United. And then you realize there's five goalkeepers there and you're number five. And that's <laughs> when the work begins to sort of grind your way up the pecking list, you know, to the top. And it was only through a whole bunch of, lucky situations that I even got a chance to play in the first team. Guys, you're going about the, um, the obviously the heartbreak in 79, but you did go on to win two FA Cup finals. Um, 93, uh, uh, sorry, 83 and 85. What were, the, what were those like? Yeah, they were great because we were desperate to win something. 83, of course, I'm remembered for the save in the final minute, which is, yeah, it's a decent save. I made a lot better than that, but People rem- remember you for the winning goal or, the, mm-hmm. you know, in your case, a, a goal line tackle or whatever. So they remember yeah. me for that. And to be fair, 
if that goes in, that was the last kick of the match. So we'd have lost to Brighton, which would have been a huge disgrace. And then there would have been a dressing room fight between me, Gordon, and probably the entire team. <laughs> uh, we, we, we came back four days later, one at 4 0, which is what, you know, which was a fair reflection of the difference in ability. And I really thought we'd kick on in 83. And we, we you know, we got a good uh, UEFA Cup run. We beat, uh, we beat Maradona and um, Barcelona. We drew with Juventus and lost by one goal away, which was a, a decent effort. Um, but we just couldn't kick on the extra level. 85, mm. we got back. Great match. Paul McGrath, world class. Norman's goal. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Did, you um, feel, did you feel a save against Smith in 83? Did you feel like a justification that you you know justified yourself for the slip in seventy nine, or was it just a? Yeah, yeah. Because um, you, be, you know, become from like the villain to the hero, then didn't you? Yeah, and neither was that bad or that good. I mean, the cross mm. was a difficult one. Arthur Alveson yeah. hadn't covered behind me, so you can. But ultimately, I'm responsible. Again, I'm responsible for the save against Gordon Smith. But you come out at feet. You just try and keep your eyes open. It hits. And because you keep your eyes open, you see it spin and you get on the rebound. All the keepers yeah. come out, eyes closed. You don't get to make the second save. Again, it's not the greatest save in the world. You'll, you'll see that in the English Prem week in and week out. But you get remembered for the saves that you, you know, that happen in big games. And, and that's why if you play long enough, you will make a save in a big sure. game that defines you. Um, yeah. I just wish, you know, like a lot of goalkeepers, I wish some of the saves I'd made that aren't remembered I'd made them in a cup final because we've all pulled yeah, something out yeah. of the top corner. We've all made a point blank save, but it's only ever remembered if you do it in a massive match. Tell us about when Sir Alex Ferguson came in then. What was your memories of that? Yeah, I, I was still injured at the time and he came in the, in the cliff and in the gym and he introduced himself. And, and I, I was like, hmm, comes across really well. Uh, has been incredibly successful. So let's watch how this goes. And I wasn't in the team to begin with. But I was, so I was able to watch from, from a distance. And I just thought, you know what? He just does everything the way you should do it. He wasn't too loud. He wasn't too motivational. He wasn't too tough. He just seemed to have this. He called you out when it was right to call you out. And, and anyway, in the March, he, he, um, I think he arrived in November. By the March time, he um, called me into his office. He said, look, uh, uh, Chris Turner's injured. Um, how are you doing with your knee? I said, I'm running really well. Um, and I've been doing a little bit of shot stopping. He said, that you can play this weekend. And I went, wow, okay, that's um, but sooner than I thought. But I said, you know what, Let, let's, let's give it a try. I'm happy. And so we played at Luton um, and I hadn't experienced him. And, and this hairdryer thing came up and the lads would not tell me what the hairdryer was. Um, and so we're one up at Luton, Kenilworth Road, and then the ball comes in. I start coming and I got not mine. I shout away and Colin Gibson gets beat far post. 1-1, one, one. we go in half time. And um, so Alex walks up to me, said, and the goal? I said, well, I thought it was mine. Decided not to come shout for the defender. It's his job. He turns to, to Gibbo, walks up to him, puts his nose to his nose and starts screaming at him. And then I see the hair go back. And that's when the penny dropped because they hadn't told me about this. <laughs> and I remember thinking, whatever you do, do not laugh because now's not a good So I just sat there, I was sat there looking down, trying to say nothing. And uh, we go out for the second half. And I'm, I'm the most senior player at the time. I think I was 28. And... Um, and I'm just looking at Sir Alex, weighing all this up in my mind, trying to make head nor tail of it, you know? And as I walk out, he sees me looking at him and he calls me over. And I said, uh, what was all that about? He goes, Gary, there, there, some, there, are, there are some players you need to scream at and some you need to talk nicely to. And he said, the key is to know the difference. And I went, holy I have never heard any manager think that cleverly. All I'd seen was managers either scream at everyone or talk yeah. nicely to everyone. And as I'm going out for the second half, I'm thinking, wow, what is it about this? There's something really special going on with this guy. I played four more games and, and I couldn't get out of bed after the first one. My knee was just finished. So I never got to play more than five games for him. But uh, when, he, when, uh, when he got the doctor's note that I needed to retire, he called me in and he said, I'm gutted for you. He said, I had to finish my career at a similar age. He said, I'm gutted for you. He said, is there anything I can do? And I'm like, yeah, that's what every manager says. I went, no, I, he says, no, I'm serious. Anything. If you want to stay here as a goalkeeper coach, I've got a job for you. If you want to, you know, if anything I can do, I mean it. And I went, wow, he actually does mean it. He really he is. Yeah. He really does care. Um, and unfortunately, I made a bad decision. I decided to go straight back to South Africa because I was still homesick. I had a year's testimonial, Maisie. I could have spent a year doing box and dines and 
adding something to my yeah. uh, little nest egg. And instead, I just bolted for South Africa and lost it all in the crash of 87. So uh, one of my big regrets was not to stay longer at United. 